For this project, we're going to be making and applying 3D transfers, 3D prosthetic transfers, a technique rightly credited to Christian Tinsley, who was awarded a 2007 Technical Achievement Oscar for developing 2D and 3D transfers. There are many ways to approach 3D transfers, these Bondo transfers. My way is merely one way to do it, and I've adapted what I learned from Italian makeup wizard Vittorio Sedano and from my mentor Oscar winner Matthew Mungle. Appliances made from prosate adhesive are becoming more and more commonly used in the industry for a variety of applications, so I thought it would be a good idea to show you a little something about the process, as well as what's in Chapter 9. So you're probably wondering, what's a 3D transfer made out of? If you've already read the book, you know. But if you jumped straight to the DVD first, you may not know. Well, here you go. 3D prosthetic transfers are nothing more than Bondo or Cabo patch that has been molded into specific appliances and attached to temporary tattoo transfer paper. To make Bondo, mix some prosate adhesive with Cabosil, fumed silica, and some coloring, either flocking, which I prefer, or a pigment, until you have the consistency you want. The thicker the Bondo, the more Cabosil and flocking you'll add. Just remember when adding color, the Bondo will dry a couple of shades darker than when you first put it in the mold. Also, the thicker the Bondo, the more rigid the appliance. You'll want to find the right mixture for softness. Christian Tinsley and Vittorio Sedano freeze their appliances to polymerize the adhesive, but Matthew Mungle doesn't. He uses his own WM Creations soft sealer essentially as an encapsulator and simply lets the Bondo dry in the mold before removing it. We're going to make a slit throat appliance and apply it to willing victim Will Chillen, lucky, lucky husband of Allison. But before we slit Will's throat, let's jump back in time and actually make the transfer. First, we'll add some pre-mixed Bondo to the silicone slit throat plate mold. This is a bit on the thick side. Spread the Bondo into the mold. You'll notice that the mold is thin and a little floppy. That's okay. We want the mold to be flexible because when the Bondo freezes, it won't be flexible and the Bondo needs to be removed from the mold while it's still frozen. Once the Bondo's in the mold, the excess needs to be squeegeed off, and then either a well-released piece of acetate or silicone parchment paper will be placed over the exposed surface and squeegeed again to remove any air bubbles before placing the mold in the freezer. We've jumped ahead a little over an hour in time and the appliance is frozen solid but the silicone mold is still pliable so we can remove the appliance without snapping it in two. Once the Bondo's out of the mold, the flashing is carefully removed so the edges won't be disturbed. Then it needs to thaw and dry thoroughly to make sure all the water has evaporated or else the appliance won't adhere properly when we apply it. You can accelerate the drying with a small blow dryer if you have one. We've jumped ahead again a little in time so we can pre-paint the appliance before attaching it to the transfer paper. For this, I'm using Skin Illustrator palettes, which are alcohol-activated pigments developed by Kenny Myers for PPI. 99% isopropyl alcohol is the alcohol I'm using because regular rubbing alcohol at 70% isn't strong enough. This alcohol is also what I'll use to blend off the appliance edges if necessary, so if you use Skin Illustrator palettes to paint your Bondo appliances, just be aware that the same alcohol that activates the pigments will also dissolve your appliance if you use too much. I'm not taking great pains to paint this beautifully because it's going to be covered with blood. Once the transfer has been painted, and you won't always want to pre-paint your appliances, it needs to get from the silicone parchment paper onto the tattoo transfer paper. A thin layer of straight prosate adhesive must be applied to the surface of the Bondo appliance right out to the edges of the piece. One nice thing about prosate is that it goes on white but dries clear. There's a version of prosate that dries tack free but we want the surface of the appliance to be sticky, so we're using regular prosade. After the glue is dry, it'll go face down onto the shiny side of the transfer paper. Press firmly along the edges to make sure there's good contact. You don't want to press too hard over the raised detail of the piece, so you don't risk crushing it. However, you do want to make sure there's good contact along the edges, so they won't try to stick to both surfaces when you peel off the silicone parchment. If any part of the appliance does try to come off with the parchment, or the acetate if you've done it that way, simply press it back down good and then try again. Then once the backing has been peeled away leaving the appliance on the transfer paper, trim the transfer paper close to the edge and it's ready to apply. I've marked the center of the appliance, where the larynx is located, so I can easily position the transfer against Will's neck. 
With the transfer in position, Allison is handing me a wet paper towel to put over the transfer paper. Doesn't have to be dripping wet, only wet enough to soak through the transfer paper. I'll hold it in place for between 30 seconds to a minute, and then carefully peel back the transfer paper. Voila! Next, I want to spatter some Skin Illustrator color over the appliance and Will's skin to further blend them together. The last step is to add some blood. I'm using some new blood from Mold Life. Mold Life's a British supplier that's recently established a presence here in the U.S., and I'm thrilled because they carry some outstanding products that aren't available elsewhere. This blood, for example, is available in arterial red, venous red, aged, and clotted. I'm using a bit of arterial blood and a bit of the venous. This is more of a post-mortem look simply because this demo is about applying a 3D prosthetic transfer, not how to create a blood effect. And there it is, complete. Not a particularly time-consuming process if you discount the actual freezing, thawing, and drying of the Bondo appliance. The removal process is equally simple. The appliance can be removed with rubbing alcohol or with any remover you'd use to remove Prosade. I'm using another new product from Mold Life called Super Cleanse and Super Cleanse Extra. This remover cuts through the Prosade like a warm knife through butter. The final step is to clean the skin and re-moisturize it. I was fortunate to bring several of Christian Tinsley's Oscar-winning 3D transfers home with me recently, courtesy of Christian and Diane Woodhouse, and I'm going to apply a cut lip appliance on Jordan McDonald, one of my makeup interns. Just like the throat appliance, I need to apply a light coat of Prosade over the surface of the prosthetic transfer all the way to the edges, let it dry, and place it face down onto the shiny side of some transfer paper. The most important part of the preparation is pressing the appliance firmly onto the transfer paper, paying close attention to the edges. Carefully peel off the acetate top sheet slowly, then trim as close to the edge of the prosthetic as possible. I shouldn't have to say this, but when you're working around someone's mouth, make sure you either wear gloves or that your hands are very clean. Make sure the transfer is positioned where you want it to be, then apply a wet paper towel pressed against the transfer paper for about 30 seconds, and then slide or peel the paper off. Then a bit of cleanup, press it firmly in place using a Q-tip dipped in water, then a bit of alcohol. Some Skin Illustrator blood in the cut, dab off any excess, and there it is. Looks painful. <laughs>